Today in the shop, I'm going to show you how I made this knockdown bench with pinned lap joints. I don't know if I saw something like this out there or not, but one day the lap joint idea popped into my head. I sketched it out, added the split top, and brought it to life. This bench isn't too practical, but I thought it was an interesting concept to build. As always, I started out by breaking down my wood. I'm using 2x6s, and the bench is 4 feet long with the legs measuring 18 inches high. After breaking everything down, I ran all the boards through my planer to remove the rounded edges. I wanted flat surfaces for cutting the lap joints on the table saw. Here, I'm marking out where I want all the joints to be cut. Initially, I wasn't going to add the dowel pins, but I figured they would help lock the legs in place. So I needed to make sure there was enough overlap in order to drill out the holes for the dowels. Over at the table saw, I set my blade height. The height doesn't need to be accurate, just consistent so that all the legs look the same. The width of the lap joint does need to be as accurate as possible, since this is just going to be a friction fit. I cut all the boards two at a time to be a little more efficient since these repetitive cuts on the miter gauge get tedious with larger pieces. I gave the legs a test fit and then went back to cut the slots on the seat pieces. I used Rockler's table saw cross cut sled since the seat pieces are much longer than the legs. One day I'll get around to making a table saw sled. I was having a problem with the sled falling off my table saw, so I built this little extension table that you've been seeing in this video. I went to test fit the leg into the seat, and I had my first major problem. The joints are a hair too small, so I decided to force them together. Then this happened. I was pretty mad because I did not want to cut any more slots without a data blade. But I sucked it up and cut another leg, only to have this happen. I wasn't paying attention and cut the slot too wide. So I got to make all those repetitive cuts again, and I finally got them to fit. And at last I can move on to making the split top. I started by drilling holes down the center of each piece to receive dowels. 
I don't remember which size doll I'm using. I think it was one and an eighth inch. I happen to have these on hand and have a corresponding forcement bit for them. After drilling, I cut down some dowels and glued everything together. This took much longer than it should have, and I'll be quiet while you watch me struggle to get this together. It took about 10 minutes to get to this point where I'm measuring and adjusting the clamps to get the gap to be the same width along the entire length of the seat. Off camera I marked where I needed to drill out the holes for the pins and then drilled them out. And I managed to get my drill stuck on the first hole. I drilled the holes all the way through the seat and as far into the bottom part of the leg as I could. It seemed to work out, the dowel fit, and it definitely made the legs more rigid. For an unknown reason, I decided to add caps to the dowel pins. I think it was so the dowel wouldn't slide in too far and you wouldn't be able to pull it out. I'm saying I think a lot because I'm editing this video about two months after I filmed it. And finally I glued the dowel into the caps. And after those dried, it was time to assemble everything. If you'd like to see how easy the bench is to disassemble, please watch this portion of the video in reverse. I'd guess that this bench has probably been done before or something like it, but I like the concept of it. Anyway, that's all I've got. I'll have links to everything I use in this video in the description, and maybe I'll even include some detailed plans if I get around to it.